Hi y'all, welcome to this week's Tech Tuesday video of the week. Today I'd like to talk to you about a read and write extension. It's this extension right up here that's the puzzle piece. It has the RW on it for read and write for Google Chrome. And you know, if you don't see this up here up front on, on your um, address bar area, look in here again. Your little skinny snowman can open up where you have more extensions in case it's not right here visible. If you do not have it, um, you can go and add the extension. And if you need help with that, uh, there are videos in EdTechU about adding extensions, or you can just um, Google the Read and Write uh, extension, and it'll take you there. So in order to demonstrate this today, I have a Google Doc open. I put some text in here from Jack and the Beanstalk, and I um, want to show you how this works. So having that extension right there, you just click on it and this toolbar is going to open up. And there's a whole lot of options on here. So we're going to briefly go over each one of these options um, and their functionalities and then um, go from there. So this first option here is a check it. So as kids are creating uh, their work and getting ready to turn it in, they have options to be able to spell check it. It also checks for homophones and uh, grammar. So that's a neat function. It'll just underline whatever they have uh, questions about or problems uh, that need uh, addressing in their writing. And I don't see any in this piece. So this prediction text piece is pretty neat. So I'm going to come down here to an empty spot and let's say kids are going to start typing and it's going to give you options down here to help kind of predict where they might go. And I know that you can't hear this on the recording, but this is reading the words to me as I hover over them so kids can see it and hear it and, you know, decipher, find the word uh, that they would like to use in their writing. So that's a neat feature. The dictionary is also a neat feature. Now you have to have a word selected for that to work. So let me pull one up here. This is just the regular dictionary. And then there is also a picture dictionary that goes along with it. And that's thinking, whoops. I unhighlighted my word. So um, you have to have a word highlighted for it to you know, know which one you're looking for. Now, if I also would like to use a picture dictionary, that's available as well. So they can see the picture that goes along with the word and the definition. Let me close those. Now, to have it read to you, you can just highlight what you'd like or where you would like for it to start reading and then it will start. It highlights it two different colors so that they can see. I'm going to stop that. I know you can't hear that either, but I can. Um, so voices on this, all of the options to change, some of those features are here. So just click on that little uh, three dots right there. Make sure you're looking at the speech. And then there's a bunch of different voices that you can try and you can change the speed you can now this is um this is important here so if you don't have the continuous reading highlight it you know checked on here it's just going to read the portion that you highlighted when you started um i have it on right now so wherever i highlighted it's not going to stop there it'll just continue reading this whole text so those are personal preferences on how you'd like to use that. Of course, these are universal pause button and stop button. Um, this screenshot tool is going to be helpful if you're going to use this on the web. And you can take a screenshot. And let me see if I have it up here. So I've got an um, article on George Washington and Wikipedia open. And I want to use the screenshot feature. I get this little crosshair. And then I can highlight text that's like on the pictures here. Let me just do that because I didn't get the whole thing. And then that'll read to me automatically. And 
that way you're not missing any of that. Most um, text readers don't automatically read any captions and pictures. They're just looking for text in the body. So that's a neat feature. This next one, um, so this is pretty cool too. So if I highlight this whole passage or whatever it is that I want to have read, this feature right here is going to make an audio clip of it. So it'll make an MP3 um, recording of whatever you have highlighted. So I'll make one of this one. There's a little progress bar. Hang on, let me get out here. I've done this one a couple of times. Let me get out of there. And let me highlight more. So I want you to see that progress bar. So this is going to show the progress bar of how it's, yeah, and now it's made that file. I would suggest that, you know, if you're going to be, you know, making uh, MP3 files to share with students that you label them, you know what they are because they'll kind of all default to this audio maker um, and, you know, already have together like a folder or something that you'd like to save it in so that you can find it easily. So, and then that way kids can just open that audio file. You can share it in a Google Classroom or something and kids can just listen to it. So another piece here, let me see, I'm going to look. B5 Fofum. So this feature right here is going to give you a web search. So if you highlight a word or a phrase or something and you want to look it up, that's what that will do. So it'll take them to a Google search and then they can further research that um, phrase or word that they have questions about. That's pretty neat. Um, this next uh, feature is this screen mask right here. If you click it, you turn it on and you can just scroll down. So this will help keep them focused on where they need to read. Again, there's features in here that you can change. You can change the background color. So if you just need to have, um, you know, if some kids need different colors, overlays for their reading, they can do that here. You can change the size of the highlighted um, portion. There's a lot of options here. If you wanna just go back to the default, you can just hit reset and it'll take it right back. Click on that to turn it off. Let me get out of those features. But that's a that's a great tool too. Um, this talk and type feature this is already a feature that's in um, Google Docs, but you can use it directly from this, um, this toolbar as well. So this actually um, activates the microphone. The first time that the kids might use it, they'll have to give it permission to you know, um, access the microphone. And then this is their speech to text option, period. So as you know, any of your students who uh, need this accommodation or would benefit from this, I would have them practice speaking and it'll learn how to help with them, uh, help their recognize what they're saying, period. It does fairly well. I'm gonna turn it off so it'll stop. But it uh, it does fairly well, and I do a lot of ums and ahs, and I'm sure you've noticed uh, listening to these videos, but it pretty much filters a lot of those out, which is kind of nice. So that's a neat feature there. There's a translation feature. You can set the translating uh, language um, in those options as well. The highlighting feature is, is a great feature. Um, you can have the students, depending on the activity, you can have them highlighting different words. If you're having them look for, I don't know, identifying adjectives or uh, nouns or anything that you're working on at the time, the kids can, as they're reading, highlight words that they're struggling with. Let me see, I'm gonna highlight a few of these words. And I'm going to, what it'll do is that you can have it generate a whole vocabulary list. Now you can have them set, you know, like you want your nouns green and you know, your verbs blue, however you would have them uh, complete an assignment. This is gonna take all of my highlights 
and it's going to and I'm telling it I'm going to use all of those colors so that's fine and it's going to generate a new dock for me with all of those highlights combined put together and it'll sort them by color so if you did have the kids you know um, utilizing one color for a specific part of speech or anything like that you can it does give you a link to the document that they were working in and it'll tell you who who was doing this piece so that's a neat option uh, the other option is this right here is a vocabulary builder so as kids are working through their text and they find words that they need help with this will create a vocabulary list for them and as it generates, it'll populate um, with the word, the definition, and if there's a picture symbol to go along with it, it will have that as well. So this is their vocabulary list from that reading. And then there's a section here where they can put notes in themselves. So if they were gonna you know, use that word in sentences or however it is you would like them to use um, this or just have a vocabulary list that they can you know reference back to they can save it in a in a specific folder and have access to it as they need but I love that it pulls up the meaning of the word and a picture to go along with it so that's that's a great help the next thing on here this is fairly common um, that we use in Google Docs, but it's a voice note. So if you have questions or you've asked them to identify a main idea or something in whatever passage they're reading, they can tie a voice note to it. So highlight, you know, an area, they click this um, microphone and it'll allow them to record up to one minute. And then once they do, so I can record myself talking. This is what I found. Um, main idea of this is, and there you go. And then I can listen to it if I want to, and then I can insert it into this document. And you can see that it's working because this little bar is thinking and it's processing that recording. And then I have this here. And, um, then you as the teacher can listen to that response and you can also respond back to it. Now I made this myself so it's only going to let me resolve it but if if somebody else was in here and it was shared they would have an option to respond. So you could respond in a voice note back to the student and uh, they would get that um, as uh, feedback. Now this feature, I really like. I think this one's pretty neat. And um, it'll work on the web as well. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this. And this one right here, I kind of skipped over. If you highlight this, and maybe you have a whole bunch of highlights in there you don't need, that will, that'll clear them out. So that's kind of a neat way to just get rid of all the highlights if you need to. Now this last feature on here is pretty cool as well. It um, You have to highlight the text that you want to have included in this, but what this is going to do is this is going to change this into a doc where kids are going to be practicing reading. So everything I had highlighted, it put it on this page. I have to give it access to my microphone. So they'll have to do that the first time as well. And any feature within Read and Write is going to be available that's, you know, that's um, usable on this uh, page right here. So they can use this function here to have the screen highlighted and then they can read. Now, what's pretty neat about this is, is that they push this to record and then they can read this and it records it everything that they say as they're reading. So they can listen back to their reading and they can also send you a copy of their reading. So for one, you have proof that they read. So if you're using this in a small um, group or if you're using it as a station activity, you can have evidence that they've actually done what they need to do there. If they're just doing silent reading or they're practicing on fluency, or any way that you would like to use this. But once they record, 
then they could play, and then they would send it to you. So you have access to that. Um, that's a pretty neat feature. And all in all, that's about a really short synopsis of everything that Read and Write has to offer in this extension. Um, these are available, it does work on websites. It has been a little glitchy for me and I'm working with uh, the Read and Write tech team to find out why sometimes it's glitchy. But I brought up some just American literature website and here's, you know, the Velveteen Rabbit and I can have this. So any of these items that you see that are available, so this is on the web and all of these so the check it is not going to be available because they're not writing anything. But this little crosshair comes up and you can move this around. So if that's in your way, you can move that uh, toolbar out of your out of your way to uh, interact with the text. But y'all, that was just kind of a fast and easy, quick overview of um, the features in Read and Write. It is a great tool. And if you need help with this or any of the other things that you've seen on EdTechU, I would love it if you'd reach out and let a, an EdTech coach know if you need some help. And if you'd like to subscribe to the videos so you get a link to the videos every week. Um, it is May, so we're coming up on the end. We won't be doing these during the summer, but we have a few more left. So um, reach out if you guys need any help. Thanks for tuning in.